Hi class, welcome to this video where I'm going to go over a practice quiz uh, with you. You will have a quiz on Thursday. Uh, the quiz will be very much like the quiz we are about to do together here in this video. Uh, I won't do every single question, but I'll do enough so that you get a sense of what you need to be able to do. All right, so we can start off with question number one, which says expand and simplify each of the following expressions. So when we expand, we expand using FOIL first, outer, inner, last. And as a habit, I like to draw, as I'm sure you've noticed in the practice activities, that I like to draw the little arrows so that it reminds me all the time of exactly how, what order I want to multiply in. So the first one is first, so that's 2x and x, and that gives me 2x squared. And then 2x times negative 11, which gives me 22x. 5 times x gives me 5x, it's positive. 5 times negative 11 gives me negative 55. And so then I get negative, uh, sorry, 2x squared minus 17x, it's negative, negative 22 plus 5 gives me negative 17x minus 55. And that's the answer for that one. And uh, I'll let you do B on your own. I'll do C with you because in this example, it's a power rather than the two binomials written out. And so what you're going to do is you're going to write it as you would. Uh, what does a power mean, right? Up to the power of 2 means you're multiplying 2x minus 5 by itself twice. So 2x minus 5 times 2x minus 5. And again, we're going to draw our arrows. And then we just do this, you should be able to see this pattern every time, so we, that we follow the correct order. So I get 4x squared, and I get negative 10x, so 4x squared is 2x times 2x. 2x times negative 5 gives me negative 10x. Negative 5 times 2x gives me negative 10x. Negative 5 times negative 5 gives me positive 25. I then get 4x squared minus 20x plus 25. Okay, and so you can see in these cases we've expanded and then simplified. The simplify is happening here when we combine these these terms, right? So we combine those terms, that's the simplification. And we do this using FOIL, that's first, outer, inner, and last. All right, now number two, completely common factor each of the following. So when you common factor, what you're trying to do is find the greatest common factor. Now you start by looking at, at the coefficients, so 12, 30, and 36. Well, the greatest common factor is 12. Uh, sorry, it's not, it's not 12. It's 6. Uh, 12 does not go evenly into 30, so that doesn't work. Uh, so it's 6. And then because this last term has no x, the greatest uh, x is not part of the greatest common factor. Right? If if all of the terms had x, then we could put x. If all of the terms had at least x squared, then we could put x squared. Okay, so it's always your your lowest, uh, your variable with the lowest exponent, or if there is a term with no variable, then the variable is not part of your greatest common factor. So here it's 6, so then what we do then once we get that is we're going to divide everything by 6. And I just want to keep consistent with the color code I've been using in the answer keys. So it's like this. Greatest common factor 6. We divide everything by uh, 6. And when we do that, we get here. Uh, sorry, we put 6 outside the brackets. And then we get 2x squared. And we get minus 5x plus 6. And we've completely factored uh, the trinomial 12x squared minus 30x plus 36. All right, for the next one, uh, again, if I were to find my greatest common factor, in this case, it is 17. It can't, it can't, there's no variable in my greatest common factor because this term does not have a variable x. So then I'm going to divide everything by 17. And then I'm going to put 17 outside of my brackets. And when I do negative 17x squared divided by 17, uh, what I get actually for my greatest common factor, I should be putting a negative there, right? Negative, and then this is negative here, and this is also negative and negative. Sorry about that. All right, so then when I divide negative 17, x squared divided by negative 17, I just get x squared. 
and when I divide negative 51 divided by negative 17, I get positive 3. Okay, so I end up with this as my answer. Okay, then the last one, 80x minus 20x squared, my greatest common factor. My greatest common factor is 20 and x, right? See, this has an x here, and this is an x squared. What's the variable with the lowest exponents? This one here, x. So it has an exponent of one, which is lower than x squared. So x can be part of the greatest common factor. So then again, I'm gonna divide everything by 20x by my greatest common factor. And then I'm gonna set up my brackets, 20x bracket. What's 80x divided by 40x? It's four. What's 20x squared divided by 20x? It's x. And so there is my answer. All right. Moving on to number three, completely factor each of the following differences of squares. So this is very simple. All you got to do is square root both terms, right? Set this up. We get what's square root of 49, 7. What's the square root of x squared? x. Here we get our x, 7x, 7x. Plus, minus, what's the square root of 4? 2. 7x plus 2, 7x minus 2. Okay, if I square root x squared, what do I get? I get x, so that's the first term. If I square root 100, what do I get? I get 10, so positive 10 minus 10. If I square root 196, square root of 196, I get 14, and so if I do that, I get 14 here, and I square root x squared, and I get x, and so I get 14x, 14x, and then the square root of 256 is, I believe, 16, so I get plus 16 minus 16. All right, very simple. All you're doing is square rooting each of the terms, and that tells you where to fill, what to fill in. Right? You can set this up at, fir at first, and then plus, and then minus, and then fill in, fill in the terms appropriately. All right, then taking us to question number four, where we have to com completely factor each of the following trinomials. This is where students have a little more uh, difficulty. Uh, and the key here is that we're trying to find two numbers that multiply and give us this last term and that add and give us this middle term. So multiply and add. So the method that I typically use is that I take the last term, which is negative 16, and I factor it. So the first two terms that can be multiplied in order to give us 16 is 1 and 16. Now it's neg it's negative, so one of these has to be negative, so negative 1 and 16, or 1 and negative 16. The next, now if I, if I look at that, do I get uh, the answer that I'm looking for if I add these terms? For example, if I add negative 1 plus 16, do I get positive 15? The answer is yes. If the answer is yes, guess what? I'm done. I don't need to factor it any anymore. All right, so now I can do x minus 1, x plus 16, right? And you can see if I multiply negative 1 times 16, I get negative 16. If I add negative 1 plus 16, I get positive 15. And you could always, if you do, the, if you do FOIL, then you'll uh, expand and simplify it, and you should get the exact same answer. And I'll just do that really quickly as a demonstration. So here I get x squared. Here I get... 16x. Here I get negative x. And here I get negative 16. And when I simplify, I get what I started with. And so my answer is correct. All right, now what about uh, b? Let's do b. We're going to factor. Now it's a little easier because they're all. Uh, well, I guess it's about the same. They're, the answer is positive. So in this case, uh, when I do 1 and 80, for example, to start us off, I also have to do negative 1 and negative 80. And if I do 2 and 40, uh, I would also have to do negative 2 and negative 40. However, I can st see now, look, 1 plus 80 doesn't work because that gives us 81. Negative 1 plus negative 80 gives me negative 81. But here, 2 plus 40 gives me 42. So look, there's my answer. 
And now I just can write it out, x plus 2x times x plus 40, and that's my answer. Okay, last one. So again, I have here this time negative 45. I'm going to factor, so I get 1 and 45. It's negative, so one of these could has to be negative. All right, do those add to give me 4? They do not. Uh, does 2 work? No. Does 3 work? Yep, 3 works. 3 and negative, or we'll keep the pattern the same, so we'll start with the negative here first. Negative 3 and 15. 3 and negative 15. Do those add to give me negative 4? Unfortunately, they do not. Does 4 work? Nope. 4 does not divide evenly into 45. Does 5 work? 5 and 9, negative 9. and negative 5 and 9. Now if I add 5 and negative 9, do I get negative 4? Actually I do. If I do 5 plus negative 9, I get negative 4. So here is my answer. And then I get x plus 5, it's positive 5, x minus 9. All right, so that shows you how to do questions like number 4. Question number five, it says the following diagram shows a walking track that surrounds a green park that measures x in length and x minus one in width. Find a simplified expression for the area of the track. So the area of the track is this part here that is colored in, okay? And so what we need to do in order to find this area here, if you remember geometry from grade nine, is that we have to find the area of the larger rectangle and subtract the area of the smaller rectangle, all right? so. Uh, to do that, how would I find the area of the larger rectangle? Well, the larger rectangle has a length of x plus 9 and a width of x plus 4. And so that's the area of the larger rectangle. And I need to subtract from it the area of the smaller rectangle. I'm going to put it in brackets here because what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify it first. Uh, expand or simplify it first in the brackets and then subtract it afterwards and you'll see why that's important in a moment. So here we have an a, a length of x times x uh, times the width which is x minus 2. Alright so now I'm going to apply the apply foil and I get x squared plus 4x plus 9x plus 36 Okay, so that was x times x was x squared, and uh, x times 4 was 4x, and then 9 times x was 9x, and then 9 times 4 was 36. And then over here, when I do this, I do x times x. Using the distributive property, I get x squared. x times 2x, I get 2 minus 2x. So again, this is in brackets. Why is it in brackets? Well. I need to subtract the entire value from the entire value represented, uh, representing the area of the small rectangle from the value representing the area of the large rectangle. And now when I do that, means I'm going to have to subtract x squared and I'm going to have to subtract negative 2x, which means adding 2x. So when I rewrite this without the brackets on, I get this. And I'll simplify as I go along. 4x plus 9x should give me 13x plus 36 uh, minus x squared plus 2x. So notice if I subtract negative 2x, it means add 2x. And when I subtract x squared, it means minus x squared. Now I'm going to group together my like terms, which are x squareds go together. And my x's go together. All I'm doing here is reorganizing it so I can see it all together. See, I put all my x squares together, put all my x's together, and then my constant at the end. x squared minus x squared gives me 0. 13x plus 2x gives me 15x. And 30 plus 36. So there is the simplified expression for the area of this track here. All right, so the area is equal to 15x. 15x plus 36. All right, now it says, what is the actual area of the track if x is equal to 5 meters? So I would write my equation, 15x plus 36. And I would substitute in 5 for x. And then 15 times 5 is going to give me 75. Plus 36 is going to give me 111. 
I, be I believe. And it is the area, so I have to say meters squared. The area is equal to 111 meters squared. All right, so that's question number five. Uh, you can skip uh, these ones here. Question number seven says, find the length and the width of the following rectangle by common factoring the given expression that represents the area. And so if I'm doing that here, it's uh, those common factoring questions. What's the greatest common factor? Uh, in this case, it's 20. And you notice there's an x in this one. The lowest, uh, the variable with the lowest exponent is x. Therefore, x is part of the greatest common factor. And so I get 20x outside of my brackets. And then I'm going to divide these both by 20x. 60x squared divided by 20x gives me 3x. 40x divided by 20x gives me 2. Which means that my length is equal to 20x. Sorry about that. X and my width is equal to 3x plus 2. All right, so there's your length and your width. Uh, your width, and this is write an expression for the perimeter of the rectangle. Well, think if the perimeter of the rectangle is equal to p equals 2w plus 2w. That uh, sorry, 2l plus 2w. That's the uh, equation for the perimeter of a rectangle. What did I get for the length? The length was 20x. So 2 times 20x. And what did I get for the width? The width was 3x plus 2. So now I get 40x plus 6x plus 4. And 40x plus 6x gives me 46x plus 4. And that's an expression for the perimeter. And then it says, what is the actual perimeter of the rectangle if x is equal to 5 centimeters? So I can substitute in for x5 here. I'll write the equation first just to be consistent. And then 46 uh, times 5 is equal to 230, I believe, uh, plus 4, which gives us 234 centimeters. All right, so uh, in re we are using uh, centimeters because it's perimeter, not centimeters squared. All right, so that uh, sums up the uh, practice quiz. Uh, make sure you uh, complete it and then uh, submit it uh, uh, to me as part of a demonstration that uh, you studied for your, your upcoming evaluation. Best of luck to you.